Hey everybody, I know some of you have been following closely uh, as I work to sort out the LIN bus on here and the main thing that I've been focusing on right now is just getting the factory uh, switches working. Ignore this right now. It's because I'm moving stuff around. But, as you can see, we're we're communicating with these. These are on a LIN bus. If you don't know how LIN bus works, you've got a, a master device like your BCM that sends out a wake-up command. That's what turns these switches on that allows you to, once they see the wake-up command, there is a processor inside of here that actually does the, uh, the thinking, if you were, and lights up these different lights. But whenever this is in a state, we like this, we go from sending a response of, say, all zeros to res whatever it is, it's in hexadecimal, so I won't get off into the deep end, but there's a hex representation of seat back level three, so forth, you know, full seat level three, full seat level two, etc., etc. So, if the master doesn't pull these at least once every, say, 100 milliseconds, they'll shut off. And, and, uh, so whenever we are in a state where we've got something on like this, it's constantly responding with this state. And each one of these has its own specific address, uh, uh, driver side being like C1 and the passenger being, you know, 51 or something. Hex is, is, doesn't make a lot of sense because if you read up on how the limb bus works, supposedly you've only got 0 to 61 addresses, etc., etc. I don't know why my gauge is going kind of wonky there. Or my meter, I should say. Might be getting some, I'm um, getting some signal bleed over. I haven't really messed with the passenger side. Uh, I've only focused on the driver side, working on one input and one output. And the way the factory system works, specifically when it comes to the heated and cooled seats, is uh, you've got your uh, seat heater or your seat blower. And in high, you're putting the full 12 volts to it. Uh, whenever you're in medium, it drops the voltage down. Whenever you're in low, it drops it down even more. It does that by using pulse width modulation. So what you're effectively doing is you're still sending it 12 volts, but you're pulsing it at such a rate that it, it doesn't actually ever get to 12 volts on the loop. And then that's how you make the adjustments. So it's kind of like taking a light switch and flipping it on really fast to the point where you're not lighting up the room completely you're just getting enough you know, light to accomplish a low or a medium setting. So kind of what I've done here is I've only focused, I'm gonna move this one out of the way, I'm only focused on uh, just working with the AC right now. That's just because in, in the, the programming I've done, that's the main uh, address that I've worked on because if you look at this for this one device, there's nine, technically 10 states on this switch. It's in state zero right now where nothing's on. Uh, and then you've got three states for each switch. So, you know, high, medium, low, high, medium, low, high, medium, low, etc. So once you kind of get one, the logic built out for one of the switches, you can copy it over and adjust the different inputs out to it. So normally what would happen is, is, is in a truck where you have this factory or a car where you have this factory, this, the BCM sends your signal out says, hey, left-hand driver switch for a seat heater, uh, wake up and give me your state. So the switch turns on, the seat slide up, and if you haven't pushed anything, it just responds back and says, I've got a zero state. I haven't, you know, nothing's going on right now. Well, less than 100 milliseconds later, the thing asks again. You know, and that's pretty slow in the world of computers. Uh, so 10, you know, what, 10, 100 times a second, something like that. It's asking this thing, hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Well, then whenever you hit a button, and this is kind of the cool part where we'll show what's going on here, where we've got this voltage right now, which is actually what we would consider a zero voltage. It's a low voltage, even though it is 0.7. That just shows that we have continuity on the circuit. So I'm going to put the AC seat uh, to high, and now we're basically we're pulsing at a very high rate and the meters having a hard time keeping up uh, but you can see that it's jumping up to 13 uh, volts which is full voltage through this now if 
you notice I'm going to take it down to medium and now we're only getting up to about eight so we're uh, you know not quite sorry we are uh, not quite <laughs> my, my countertops not completely smooth so my suction cups not uh, suctioning worth a damn we're not quite halfway, round half, or we're a little bit higher than half, you know, excuse the dogs in the background. But that would give us a lower blower speed or a lower heat on our, our seat. So now if I go ahead and drop her down to low, uh, oh, I lost connection on my probe. Now we're only getting about three, three volts out of it. So you know we're we're looking at uh, a quarter of the maximum voltage that you could be running on this blower or putting to this this heater now some of the other things that that you've got to do beyond this is we've got to tie it into a proper power supply uh, that requires amperage i'm looking at you phil if you could get me an amperage on the factory uh seat heater elements uh, our resistance actually run an ohm meter and get me the resistance i can calculate the amperages and see what kind of MOSFET power supplies that, that we need to be able to tie these things in. The, the motor is not as much of an issue. It's not going to have a higher, uh, as high an amperage because the seat heaters literally just generate heat by adding resistance to your circuit. So uh, that is a basic breakdown of how the LEN network, the local interconnect network, works this is the network that controls things like your mirrors your seat controls your seat heater seat blower uh, maybe the cab lights uh, the windows uh, the the dash buttons down below uh, which will be an interesting thing I've, I've got a set of the upfitter switches somewhere uh, they communicate through the BCM I haven't looked at the drawings on those they may connect through Lynn and so instead of tearing those things open and and uh, trying to get on the switches there might be a way that you could actually program uh, a controller to use the switch inputs to do whatever the hell you want not just turn something on and off but you know there, there's there's a lot of things uh, on this LEN network that's that gives you some really neat options so uh, that's kind of a breakdown if you have any questions feel free to uh, to jump on here and ask and, and this is more of an informative thing I'm not going to get into the the meat and potatoes of it this is you know way off the deep end uh, my background is is uh, automation programming so this this kind of runs hand in hand with what I do anyways and, and uh, if I can get to a point where I can make the information more easily digestible I'll try and share more of it but at this point in time I'm just showing you what's possible so there's a lot of these things out there that that people are going to try and say that that can't be done and and uh if possible you know i, I we'll keep on debunking that mentality and and uh upgrading our trucks i guess so i'll i'll see you guys soon let me know if you have any questions